Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the session. It's going to be an interesting topic today, so I hope you're ready. <laughs> All right. So, shall we start? Yes, Atma Namaste, Sumi. Atma Namaste, Atma Namaste, Lakshmi, Atma Namaste, everyone. So, shall we close our eyes? We'll start with an invocation. Inhale and exhale, relax your body. Inhale the fresh prana. The oxygen out there. Let's enjoy it while it exists and continues to be around us. Take it deep into your core. Exhale. Take the prana and oxygen again deep within you. And exhale. Feel yourself in the presence of the teacher, Grand Master Chok Oxylot Mahagaraji Mailing, and the Supreme Being. Without whom we wouldn't be here together, we wouldn't be learning these things. Feel gratitude, respect, and love to them. Let's invoke. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Cho, from the Lord Mahaguru Jimili. To Buddha Kwanian, Buddha Sakimuni, to Gautama Buddha, to Lord Christ, to Lord Yehoshua Bar Miriam, to Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha, to the angels, the teachers, and the masters of theosophy, the angels and beings of knowledge, light, and power. To our soul and divine self, we humbly ask for your blessings, for your guidance, for your protection all through the session. To all the angels and beings of communication of our respective internets and Wi-Fi, we ask for your help and guidance. To have a steady communication all through the session. To also ask for your help and blessings to all of you up there. To help us have an open and receptive mind to absorb and assimilate all the priceless teachings and knowledge being imparted to us, to have a clearer and deeper understanding of these pearls of wisdom. Help us to make it part of our lives and use it to become a better divine instrument. We thank you in full faith, with gratitude, respect, and love, we thank you. Be aware of the energy coming into you. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale, share it with your family. Thank them again. Inhale and exhale, share it with everyone who's joining us. Inhale and exhale, share it with the whole globe. Atma Namaste, everybody. Welcome to our session today. We're going into the planetary chains today. Uh, it's going to be interesting. But before I do that, I just want to talk about a couple of things about yesterday. So um, yesterday we said that uh, once you're taken on, right, into the state of uh, probation, what happens is when you start with your process and then you come into the first initiation, which is those three processes we spoke about, once you're there, right, uh, your ultimate goal for all of us here is actually to become an adept, yes? Now, the adept is what you would call the fifth level. Uh, the first initiation is right here. So at least if we come on to this, that itself will save us. Now, what are we talking about? What are we saving ourselves from? It's like this. Now, in this particular evolution of time that you and I are at this point, we need to reach to become an adept. If we've then stepped into at least the first level, if we have already come here at this point, then what happens is we are safe because if we don't, even at this, uh, at this entire uh, process of our life, if we don't become an adept, right? Uh, I'm talking about evolution process, not just this lifetime. Yes, um, if we don't reach that, which can happen, right? Uh, the goal is to reach that. We will be left behind. And so to avoid being left behind, we're trying to look at ways in which we can actually go forward and get to become more and more spiritually evolved till we reach the level of an adept. Yes. And so they say that um, there's a lot that we could do, but they say that as we go higher and higher in evolution, one of the things we have to be aware is if we are not yet initiated, yes, there is a danger that we are going to be left behind in our present wave of evolution. So this particular wave of evolution that we are part of, we will be then left behind um, at this point. And then we will become the failure of this age. Yes? 
So the point is for us to try and see that we actually get into this whole circle and um, get into moving spiritually higher and higher as we evolve. Yeah. And so to move on to our next chapter, the chapter today, an interesting chapter, is actually the planetary chains, but I just put it there as chains because we're really not going to look at all the other um, aspects, but we just have a small part today. So keeping this in mind, um, just give me a moment while I adjust my screen. Yeah. All right. So what do I want to talk about? So the first thing that I want to talk is about the scheme of evolution, right? And so in this scheme of evolution that you and I are part of in the solar system, remember, we're not going beyond the solar system. From the beginning of the book, I said, whenever we talk about or whatever we're going to talk about, it's going to be only with reference to our solar system. And so in our solar system, there are what is called 10 separate chains. Yes. So just in our scheme of evolution, we're talking about 10 separate chains that are existing. So if you look at this flower, right? If you look right on top there, right in the middle, if you look solar logos, it says, or Lord Savitur or the solar God, right above that is number one. And so you have number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are 10 chains. So these are called chains. And in each chain, right? If you look at just going back to number one, if you look at it, you normally have a certain number of globes. Yes. And so you will notice that each, each chain, yes, if you call this a chain, each chain has globes within it. Can you see that? Each one has globes. Now, normally, they usually have only seven globes in it. However, keeping the second line in mind is what is written there. <clears throat> only seven of these so-called, uh, only seven of these uh, only seven of them, sorry, have planets, yes, that are in the physical world, right? And so only seven have planets in the physical world out of the 10. So three of them do not have any planets that come even close to our physical world. So let's try and understand this, okay? So make it very, very simple. Each of those petals is a chain. Inside each chain, there are globes, yes? So let me take you to the next one to help you go into this. Now, if you look at it, you can see those seven colored dots on the extreme left. Yes. So you can see this one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So right here, this is what you call the globe. Now, each globe goes through what is called seven incarnations. So the globe also goes through incarnations. Sorry, sorry. I've forgotten to do one thing, right? I've forgotten to mute all of you. Hold on. <laughs> Give me a sec. I apologize for that. So here we go. All right, so we've muted everyone. Anybody who comes later will also be muted, so we shouldn't have a problem. Okay, so let's go back. Right, so I said, uh, let me just go back one screen back just to keep it going. So you'll notice that each of those little loops that we have, like a petal, each petal is called a chain. Inside each chain, there is what you call globes. Right now, each globe, right, the globes, there are a total of seven globes, and these globes go through seven incarnations. So, each, each uh, chain that is the globe in that particular chain goes through seven. So, you can see this, and so you have one incarnation, two incarnations, three, four, five, six, and seven incarnations. Yes? So, if you understand this, the next image might also make sense to you. So if you look at this, so you're talking about each chain, which look like a little petal, right? So each chain has seven globes. You can see the seven globes here. And each of these uh, globes goes through what is called seven incarnations. And so to help you understand this a little, little better, now you've got to remember that if you could see there were layers here, so if you can look here, this is the lower mental level. Just below these two circles called A and G, this is the mental level. So if you can draw a line there, so that is one level. 
The next level is under B and F. Can you see this, what I'm drawing here with my pointer? So this is the astral level, right? And then right here where you have C, D and E is the physical level. So this is with reference to the physical world, the astral world, and this is the mental world. So our present where we are, the present globe that we are is number D. Yes, so if you can see here, number D, that is Earth, correct? So we are in this chain and we have seven globes. In our seven globes, yes, we have two of them in the lower mental, that is A and G. We have two in the astral level, that is B and F. And we have three, yes, three globes, yes, globes, yeah, circles. We have three of them in the physical world. Yes? Did you understand so far? If you have, can you just put a, a, a blue palm on against your name so at least I understand that you've got it. Otherwise, I need to repeat myself. Okay, two, three, four. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, all right. So if you've got it so far, perfect. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. I really need to know that you're starting to get what I'm saying because... Uh, if you've done this before, yes, it's easier to understand. But if you've not done this before, it's, it's a little different. Yes. And so you understand now there are, again, to repeat myself, you have the lower mental. Yes, we have the astral and in the physical. So two globes in the mental level, lower mental, two in the astral level and three in the physical level. Okay. Now, let me add one more thing and come back to this. So if you look at it, our globe presently is quite an interesting globe. We are right here. Yes, if you look at it, it's called Earth or it's called globe D. This is where you and I are. And so if you look at it, it looks like it's going like an, like an arch, right? But what's happening is you start to come here, correct? So for even for the evolution of a globe, even for the evolution of the chain, it starts with the mental, lower mental, then it comes down to the astral, then it comes down to the physical. Yes. And then from here again, it goes to the astral and then goes up to the mental. So even for chains, yes, even for globes, for everything, it's the same as us. We're going to come through all the different levels and then take a U-turn and go up. Yes. You and I do this, correct? That's what we understood. We come from the causal body. We come down using the creating for us, uh, for ourselves, a mental body, an astral body an etheric and physical body, and then we take on, right? And then after that, you want to then see to it that you, the, the divine essence or the divine spirit within you, then controls matter. And then you slowly ascend towards controlling your physical, then overcoming your astral, getting better matter in that, into the mental and then going back to the causal. Similarly, every chain comes from the lower mental into the astral, into the physical, and then again, just like us, from here, from the physical, it moves again to the astral and to the mental. Yes. So even with reference to globes and chains, they also descend further and further into more dense and grosser matter. So that's basically what we were trying to show you. Yeah. So whether it's a chain, whether it's a globe, doesn't matter even if you don't remember that. The point is every aspect with evolution is still going through the same same style that we have been using for ourselves. Yes, coming from subtler matter into more dense, dense matter till it's time to take a U-turn and then go back again the same way. Yes, so that is one thing that I wanted you to understand at this point. Let me go back to these images. Yep. So to start to share a little bit more. Right. And so this is where you and I are. So for the sake of convenience, we're going to try and name each of these globes. We are presently in what is called the fourth incarnation with reference to us, the globe D. Right. And so since we are, uh, we are the first globe in this incarnation, we will, sorry, uh, we are uh, the fourth. Right. So we're going to call all of them by the number four. So in the image that you have, this will become 4A, this will become 4B, 4C, 4D, 
for E, for F, and for G, because we are in a fourth incarnation, all right? And so what you are familiar with is D, which is the earth where you and I all exist. Now let's make some more references. So if you look at the physical world, that's the lowest part where we have three. So in the physical world, besides the earth, which is physical, we also have 4C and 4E. 4C is who we call, what we can see even in the evening when the sun sets, Mars. So Mars is what you call the other globe in our chain, which is connected to the physical world, right? And so here you have Mars C. That is still coming down, right? So this is the astral, this is still coming down to the physical. However, if you look at the other side, yes, E, which has already started to move upwards, yeah? It's already taking the upward uh, trend and going upwards. This globe, yes, is called Mercury, right? And so these two planets are, which are, who are quite close to us, one is still descending into matter, which is Mars, that is 4C, and 4E has already moved from its present position, uh, sorry, it's moved from our present position, which is D, it has already started ascending upwards, yes, that is the planet Mercury, right? Hope this is easy for you to understand. So now looking back at, since I said we are the fourth, in, fourth incarnation, right? So we are at the fourth incarnation, right? And so we are here right now, right here. However, interestingly, what I want you to look at is, let's go back to the previous. So this is our fourth incarnation uh, as a globe. Now, what was our globe like in the third incarnation? And that's where we're going to go. I hope this is going to be interesting for you. Let's go. And so, our third incarnation is what you call, with reference to the moon, the lunar chain. That's where we all came from. That was our previous incarnation. Now, when I say this, I'm not talking about your last incarnation, yeah? I'm talking about the globe. The whole race, the whole human race, the whole, uh, all the beings that are coming. It's not, I'm not talking about you and I. So with reference to the globe, the third incarnation, right, prior to where we are today, that is the earth, was the moon. So in this one, we would call this 3A, 3B, 3C, 3D would be the moon, 3E, 3F, and 3G. Yes, whereas you and I here with what you call 4D, the previous time we were here is when you and I were referred to as part of the lunar chain. And that was a very, very, very long time. But it's good for us to know where we came from, right? And so the moon is the third incarnation. Excuse me, I repeat myself. And it was called the lunar chain. Yes. Now, we are already at the fourth. There is still the fifth to come. And the fifth will come, I mean, it's very, very far into the future, nowhere close. But uh, at that point, I want to show you the difference, okay? So we are at the fourth incarnation. So remember, everything has seven. So that's one, two, three. We are right here, four, then five, six, seven. So if you look at one, two, three, three is at this level. We are four, yes? Five and three are actually almost at the same level. Yes, so what is that level? Let's go back to our moon to try and understand that a bit. So if you look at this figure, right? This moon was not at the same level as what you and I would call uh, the physical as physical as we are, right? So if you look at it, 3A, yes? If you look at 3A and 3G, they were in what you call the higher mental. Yes, unlike our 4A and 4G, which was in the lower mental, this 3A and is my yeah, this 3A and 3G is in the higher mental. 3B and 3F, which is here, is actually in the lower mental. So 
3a sorry 3b and 3f is the same as 4a and 4g so if if it was possible i would have split that picture slightly to bring it up yes so our 4a and 4g is the same level as 3b and 3f that is the lower mental now coming back to the lunar chain if you can see me I'm, I'm at c now so 3c and 3e yes are in the astral world which is equivalent to our 4b and 4f yes so this would actually be in one line like this and lastly our moon would have been in line with mercury mars on that level of the physical yes so i hope that was easy enough for you to understand we're just talking about this yes so remember this was with reference to higher mental lower mental astral and the physical but not the physical as as with reference to d which is much lower now the next the fifth incarnation which is still coming up in our future will have something very very similar to what we just looked at in our lunar chain yes so what will happen here in the next we'll call this the fifth incarnation the fifth incarnation which will be 5a and 5g will again go up one notch compared to our earth chain our earth chain is at this level it has to go one level up so the planet yes the physical planet that will exist in that time will have moved to this level that is where d is the physical level yes so 5d will be on the same level as mercury and mars for us at this point and then if you look at 5 c and e 5 c and e would have moved up to the astral level 5b and f would have moved to the lower mental and then going one notch higher than our particular chain it would have gone up to the next one which is the higher mental that is 5a and 5g would have gone up to the higher mental is that okay did you get that yes can i see raise of hands again or you can just cuz i need to know if you got this yes didn't get this okay getting it people are getting it no nope kind of <laughs> yes all right let me go let me see if i can find another image to help you okay some of you got it some of you are still saying no okay so let me go back to all right so when you look at this image yes uh we are presently at the uh we are the fourth chain yes so if you can see this it shows uh, the scheme one second hold on okay this is not a very clear image of what i want to show you okay no nope. i don't have another image let me see uh, i need to show you another image okay let me do this maybe i get my son's white board <laughs> okay so let's see if i can do this with this little thing here so we have what you and i would call yes the earth right so let me put the earth right here can you see that little dot yes and then i'll put a dotted one for mercury and mars and then we have again another one and another set yes and so this level is what we are calling the lower mental lm yeah i've just written lm there this level we're going to call the astral i'm just going to put a and this is one level of the physical 
Yes, P, and this is the only one that's below, which is the lowest level. Okay, now if you look at the previous incarnation, that is the third incarnation of the globe, then we have one more layer here. I'm going to put it like a dotted line, and that is the higher HM, higher mental. Okay, so in the third incarnation, this is the fourth we are talking about. Yes, so in the third incarnation, we had two globes in the mental. We had two globes in the lower mental. And then we had two more in the astral. But we had only one here. And this is who we call our moon. Yes, so this is the third incarnation. Now let's go to the fifth, which is yet to come. It's going to be very similar to this. So if you can see, you can see this circle. It is also the circle of globes. This chain is also going down one notch. So this is the lowest level they can also come down to. That is purely physical. Just like you and I have physical bodies. It's come all the way down here. But the next one, the fifth, will also rise up. It will rise up one notch from here, yeah? So let me just put another dotted line here. So you'll notice that this glow, this chain, if I can call it now, is at this level, but ours came down one level lower. Can you see ours is one level lower? Now, the fifth, we've already come here, we are taking our U-turn, we are going up. And so the next one, We'll, we'll then move one step higher. So it will have one globe here, which has not yet materialized. So it will have one globe here. So physically it's not visible at this point. Then you will have two, because we have to make a total of seven, right? So we have three here, that's two on the astral level. Two more on the mental level, making it only five. And then lastly, we have two more on the higher mental, making it seven. So if you look at this one, you'll notice it's also moving one notch higher. So even with the chains, they are moving in the same way. Yes? Does that make sense? Now, can you tell me if you understood? Perfect, all right. Yes, yep, okay, perfect, all right. Yeah, I couldn't find a picture like this to, to represent it. So keeping this in mind, let me just close this. So keeping this, this in mind, um, okay, so assuming that this is a chain, yes? Now this chain from here has moved down here Yes, to this level and has moved down to this level. The next chain will move one notch higher. It will be in the astral. Yes. So this globe over here that we're talking about will then have one in the astral, two in the lower mental, two in the higher mental, and then two in the next level, which is called the intuitional world. Yes. Did you get that? Right, okay, let me. Uh... I'm, I, I still have to figure out how to use the, the board in, in this. Okay, let's do one more thing, yeah? All right, so let's keep it like this. You have the. Okay, so this is physical one, physical two, astral, lower mental, higher mental, intuitional, and spiritual world. All right, so that's uh, what I'm going to do. And then the first, that is where you and I are. We have our globe somewhere from the lower mental going all the way down till this, yeah? So we have two here. We have two here, 
We have two here and we have one. Yeah, I need to draw some more on this. That's why I'm trying to see if I can do it better. Okay, now that is the fourth incarnation. Now the third incarnation is right here. Can you see? I think this doesn't work very well. Okay, so the third, yeah, three is here all the way till here. Yeah, it has two over here, two in the ment lower mental, two in the astral, and one physical, that was our moon. And the same thing is going to happen with five. Yes, two in the higher mental, two in the lower mental, two in the astral, and one which is yet to materialize, on the physical and then if you look at the next one yes that was our second incarnation that is two i hope you can see this i don't have any more colors left so this green one will end two in the intuitional two in the higher mental two in the lower mental and only one in the astral yeah and then the same thing is going to happen in the sixth the sixth is also going to have something similar Two in the intuitional, two in the high mental, two in the low mental, one in the astral. Can you see that? What I'm trying to show you is that the whole, every scheme in this evolution has to come down to the lowest level and then go up. Okay, I'm, I'm left with only this, this not so good blue. So if you can think of this as a blue, so it has two in the spiritual, two in the intuitional, two in the high mental, and one only in the low mental. So imagine only one globe, yes, uh, one globe in the lower mental for the first round. This is our first uh, incarnation. <laughs> and that is like the highest for us right now. Yeah, so the lowest for the first incarnation is the highest for us right now. So we've really come down, right? So as, an, as this particular round is happening, you'll notice that this globes have all come down, descended, and now they're starting to go till they go up to the seventh. Yes. And here's the seventh one. Two on the spiritual, two on the intuitional, two on the low men, sorry, high mental, and one on the lower mental. So that's what it looks like. Yeah, I hope that's better for you. Right? Can you see it? Okay, perfect. So thanks to my son. Thanks for all these things that he has here. Okay, I can suddenly find. Okay, I have no idea where I left it. All right. So keeping that in mind, so you realize that we have been coming down, we're right here, and then we are going upwards, all right? So hopefully that makes more sense. So let me go back to, thank you. All right, that's the best I could think of right now. Okay, so let me go back. So they've mentioned that each chain, yes, the globes grow, go through seven incarnations. And so that's what I was trying to show you. Each chain, yes, the globes that we have in each chain has to go through seven incarnations. And so the life energy or the life wave will be on one during one incarnation. Yes, and so right now, the life, the life wave, as they call it, is on Earth. Yes, so right now, the, the concentration of life energy is actually on Earth. Just to remember that. Okay, so if you look at this image, you can see that this so-called movement of the cycles repeats itself. Can you see the number of circles? It's seven. So the seven rounds of the earth chain. Yes. So even for this life, so the round is basically when that life energy starting from here above A, can you see this, this line? Yes. So this loop will go from A to B to C to D 
to E going out. This is the outermost. Yes, if you look at concentric circles. And if you look at it now, it's finished with G. But now it's going to A again, but it's coming now the second one. It's no longer the first. It's now doing the second round. And it continues there till it comes up here. You notice here it's the second one. But as it moves to A, it becomes the third. So you'll notice one, two, and it's become the third one. Right? And so it will continue till it comes down to the last one, which is called the seventh. Yes, which we are nowhere close to. So seventh will come all the way here. If you look at it, going down to the earth, going through Mercury, going through F, and then going to G, and then it takes the turn out. Yes? So even this goes around seven times. Now, where are you and I? We are, let's count here, one, two, three, four. So this whole circle that you can see with the seven globes is called the chain. Yes? And what I was showing you where I was going round and round is called a round. <laughs> Is that simple enough? Yeah, as I was moving round and round with my pointer, that's called a round. There are seven rounds and there are seven globes. So right now we are in the round one, two, three, four. Can you see the fourth one? I'm going down the fourth one from A to B, going down, down, down to C, going down, down on the fourth line there going down to the earth. So that's where we are, fourth incarnation, right? And we still have this whole thing to move further all the way around. So let's go back. So these are the 10, right? And so you will notice that in each of them, there are certain planets mentioned, right? And so I'd like us to look at this before I go forward in my explanation. Yeah, so let me just read this out for you. Thus, it will be seen that not only does the life wave in passing through one chain of globe dip down, lower and deeper into matter and rise out of it again, but the chain itself in its successive incarnations does exactly the same. So in the 10 schemes that you can see right now of evolution existing in our solar system, only seven, yes, of them are at the stage where they have planets in the physical world. Yes, only seven of them have planets in the physical world. So let's move on. So if you look at it in the first one, right, coming up here, this is the first one, number one. In the first one, they say that the planet, the unrecognized planet today, is called Vulcan. Can you see the word Vulcan here? V U L C A N. Yeah, so it's Vulcan. Now, this particular um, planet was spotted in front of the sun, yes, by this astronomer called Herschel. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but it's H E R S C H E L. And he spotted this on, I think, the 20th of March, 1959. Yes. And after that, this particular planet just disappeared. It's, it cannot be seen anymore. Right. And so it says that is probably because it is understood that it has moved from, it has passed from its fifth to its sixth chain. Yes. And so it's moved further out and so no longer in the physical and therefore it's gone. However, interestingly, let's go to number two, right? So in number two, you will find the planet that is existing there. It's called Venus. Yes, who are, we are all familiar with, a very close neighbor to the Earth. It is in the fifth incarnation, right? And so this, uh, this planet, yes, is now in the fifth incarnation. And therefore, uh, has only one visible globe that we can also see, yes? And so if you look at the third one, this is the Earth scheme, we actually have three. So we have the Earth, uh, remember we showed you Mars on one side and Mercury. So we actually have three planets in ours, in our particular uh, section. 
and then if you look at the R chain and then moving on, if, if you look at it, we have three visible uh, planets and we are in the fourth incarnation just to be aware of that. So we are here, the third one, the Earth scheme, but in the Earth scheme, uh, we are in our fourth incarnation. The third incarnation was the moon, which is previous. So we are still in that one. And then you have uh, in the next one, in the fourth, you find Jupiter there. And in the fifth one, you find Saturn. And then you find Uranus in the sixth one. And in the seventh one, there is Neptune. Yes, uh, Neptune has two unnamed planets as well. We, are, we don't have any name for them, uh, which is also in its fourth incarnation. So Neptune, just to keep in mind, nothing important for us because we are not going to be worried about this, has two other planets. Uh, yes, and so they also have three planets as we have, right? So uh, these are eight and nine and 10 are unnamed schemes. Remember we said only seven of them have visible physical planets. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Neptune being, being the seventh one. Just for your understanding, yeah? So they all have visible planets. Uh, with the last three, we do not know the name of the scheme. And at the same time, they have nothing existing in the physical world, yeah? They're all much higher than the physical world. Just to keep that in mind before we go forward. All right? Okay. Is this clear so far? Is this okay? People? Yes? Yes, yes, you're okay. I know it's a little heavy. That's why I just want to go through it a little slow. Uh, I've prepared for a lot more, but I think I'd like to take it slow so you actually understand it somewhat clear. <laughs> right, but most of you have said that's 99.9% .9 have said they are getting it. So I'm happy to hear that, yeah? So keeping in mind, yes, uh, I'm, I'm just going through this really quickly, yeah? So let's go through this again one last time before I close this part. Yeah. So just to, for you to remember, in the evolution of the solar system, that's where you and I are part of, there are 10 separate chains of evolution. Yes. And in the 10 separate chains of evolution, there are seven which have physical worlds, which we can physically see. That's it. That's all you have to remember in this. Nothing more. Don't worry about anything else. All the rest was just extra information. Yes. But all these chains have seven globes and these seven globes go through what you call seven incarnations. And this is represented better in this. And in those seven globes, uh, if you look at ourselves, we are in the lowest. We have descended to the lowest as a chain to what you call in the physical world. One of the few that has actually three planets in the physical world. And in this particular chain, we are in the fourth round. Round is where you go round and round and round. Yeah. So in this round, we are in the fourth round right there in the middle. Yes. And uh, to add to that, we are going to talk about a few more things. So that's all you have to remember. We are right there. We are the third chain. Uh, interestingly, we are on the fourth uh, globe as well. So you can see one, two, three, four, fourth globe. We are the fourth, uh, the fourth round. And uh, interestingly, we are also in the fourth root race. Yeah, so lots of fours going our way. So let me move forward. Okay, now, um, let me go there. Okay, so our globe, which is called the Earth, yes, and that's what we've been referring to it as, yeah, our globe, Earth, or also called number D in many of the references. With reference to that, our globe, we are the fourth root race, yes, the fourth globe, the fourth round, the fourth chain. So before I get here, I want you to look at, if you have the book, yes. Um, I'm not sure exactly which page you are on, but there is information about Neptune, Pluto, all, uh, not, not Pluto, sorry, Uranus, Neptune, and all that. If you come uh, maybe two paragraphs after that, there is actually a tabular form. Can you find your tabular form? All right, for those of you who don't have a tabular form, not a problem. I'm going to be reading it out to you. So basically, if you look at it, in each incarnation of a chain, yes, which is called the chain period, there is what you call the divine life that moves seven times. And when it moves, that movement is called <clears throat> rounds. Yeah, that's what I showed you. 
and that wave will then stay upon each planet. And so when it decides, page 154, thank you so much, appreciate that. Yes, and so when you look at uh, a particular, let's look at this one, this is the best for this, all right? So you'll notice that there is a chain, and so this is called a chain period, the whole thing. And the chain period, when the wave, can you see this little line that comes from A? When this moves, this is called the wave of life, yes? And it moves through all the seven globes, seven times, yep. And when it moves through one whole, yes, circle of all the seven globes, it's called one round. And so we are right now in the seventh, sorry, fourth round of the seven rounds. We are in the fourth right here. We're right here. Yes. However, the earth is right now the place where the life wave has more or less stopped. It stays there for a certain period of time. And so right now, this energy that I'm showing you that is moving, it has now stayed at the earth planet. And then it is then called a world period. Yes. And when there is a world period, under the world period then comes what is called seven root races. And under the seven root races, what we already spoke about in earlier sessions is seven sub races. And then of course there are branch races. Yes. And so if you look at your tabular form, this is what it says. So there are seven branches of races. So remember the one that we, we spoke about, the Aryan, under that we had the Roman, and under the Roman we, we spoke about four. I think the French, German, English, and Italian. So there are seven, yes? So there are seven branch races, yes? Seven branch races make one sub-race. Seven such sub-races then make one root race. Yes? And seven root races make one world period. And so the life energy right now has stopped or stayed, not stopped, the wrong word. It has now localized <laughs> and focused itself on earth that is number D. And so the world period will now have <clears throat> obviously seven root races, seven under each of those root races, seven sub races, and each sub race will further have seven branch races. All right, so going back to what we're talking about. So seven branch races make one sub race. Seven sub races make one root race. Seven root races make one world period. Seven world periods make one round. Yes, and seven rounds make one chain period and seven chain periods make one scheme of evolution. And therefore there are 10 schemes of evolution in our solar system. Yes, and so you will find the globes, yes, and you will find the 10 in this as well. That's basically something that I wanted to share. Yes, and so at this point, interest, interestingly, we have to make it very clear, we are in our fourth root race. Based on that tabular form, we are the fourth root race of the fourth globe, yes, of the fourth round of a fourth chain period. And so we are more or less literally kind of in the center, right? However, the exact center, let me go to that. So if you look at it, everything is right now number four, four, four. So going back to that uh, circular one, let me show you this. And so we are right here, fourth round and the fourth period of this round and we are in the fourth root race right here. Yes. And so how does that uh, make any sense to us? Hold on. So we are in the central point of our so-called evolution. We are halfway through that. But interestingly, yes. Um, so if you look at this, remember this image I showed you as well? Yes. So if you look at this as well, we've come down literally right in the middle. We're right there in the middle and then we're gonna go up. So at this point, we are the fourth chain with the fourth globe. Yes, we are the fourth period, world period, the fourth root race. Yes, and 
and if you check uh, the information in the book, yeah, going back, hopefully that helped. So if you go back to it, we are literally halfway through our evolution. So the central point actually happened in the previous uh, race, which is what you call the Atlantean race. So they are the ones who actually meet, met the exact center of our evolution. We are a little past that because we are the next uh, race, which is the Aryan race, right? So we are the next uh, root race, which is the Aryan race. However, to understand that we've just sort of passed that midway point or the halfway point of our evolution. So congratulations, we are past that at least. At least for now, we know where we are, at least in the scheme of things, yeah? All right, I would like to share more, but I'm not too sure if it's the right time. Okay, so we'll go to this tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to stop now. I think that's a lot. <laughs> I can feel some of your brains like overflowing and oozing with, with information and like, what did she say? Okay, so let's go back to, uh, to you and uh, what you've been saying. <laughs> Okay. Um, so does it have anything to do with the yugas, the Kali Yuga? Uh, now that is with reference to, uh, when Master Cho talks about it, it's with reference to the sun, yes? Now the closer we are to the sun, we have greater prosperity and you know, it's, it's an amazing age. But as we move away from the sun, right? Okay, let's do it like this. So say, for, for example, we're here and we're the closest to the sun. This is the sun and we are here, right? So when you're closer to the sun, everything is great, prosperous. But as we move away from the sun, this is called Kali Yuga. So we have to try and make now a relationship between this and what we're calling right now, the turning point of our evolution. So we've gone from here. And remember, interestingly, this is the sun, which is also the solar system. So we have literally gone away. We've come to the lowest point where you and I would call what is called physical manifestation in, in the densest of matter that we can. And we are also further away from the sun. But as we start to evolve, we've just taken that U-turn. As we come back, life will start becoming better for all of us. Yes. And so, yes, I think there would be a correlation between that movement, which uh, we talk about in the, uh, in the uh, Hindu context, yes, yeah, so or the Sanskrit context, and with relation to theosophy. That would be one way of looking at it, yeah? <laughs> You've passed 50%, how sweet is that? <laughs> well, just try and read through it. Um, I'm hoping what I said is going to simplify it for you. Uh, and it, it'll help you try and look at it. Just, just remember that. So tomorrow before we go, I'm just going to quickly run through it. Uh, so if you have any quest questions, it would help you. Uh, were these information channeled or clairvoyantly observed or written in the book? Um, curious how science looks at, at all this information. All right. So, um, Kim, most of this information has not yet been discovered completely by um, the scientific community. However, the theosophy, the theof theosophists, if I can call them that, uh, they do have a lot of very highly evolved clairvoyants. We're talking about 100 years ago. Uh, where the teachers, the higher, uh, remember we were talking about masters, a lot of these masters uh, took many of them on as disciples, including uh, the person who's written this book, the textbook of Theosophy, that is Bishop Ledbetter. And so when uh, Charles uh, Ledbetter was then taken on as, uh, as, a, as, a, um, as a son of a, a master or uh, apprentice, he gets to also understand this directly from those great teachers who have greater knowledge about this. Plus, there are also those who are clairvoyant. And I think uh, Bishop Ledbetter has been clairvoyant uh, based on some of the books he's written. And so he's also then able to look through and understand. But he says some of these things are so high up there, you can't see beyond. Right. And I think that was mentioned in one of the earlier sessions. There's only till here that the a human clairvoyant can actually see. Right. It, we just don't have those abilities. It's like we, we're missing some uh, parts that that are required to to be able to see further than that. And so these great teachers who've gone way beyond us uh, then explain to uh, man 
that this is what is happening. So yes, it hasn't been fully uh, recognized. But interestingly, I was reading Occal Chemistry by uh, Madam Blavatsky. And a lot of things that was written by her maybe uh, 125, 30 years ago, science is only discovering right now. Even chemistry is just discovering right now. So there's a lot written uh, that hasn't been completely scientifically proven uh, at this point. So with scheme of evolution, uh, with reference to the evolution, that's what we showed you, right? Uh, that was the last image that we had here. No, it's the second last image that we had here. Hold on. So with the scheme of evolution, we've just moved here, but before that. So this is where we are right now in the scheme. So in every scheme, there are 10 schemes, right? So and in each scheme, uh, sorry, uh, there are 10 schemes, chains of evolution, and each chain uh, has what you call uh, seven globes. So we are in the fourth chain. Yes, remember those petals? And we are in the fourth round, and we are in the fourth globe, and we are the fourth root race. Yes, so that's where we are to answer your question with reference to evolution. Lady Blavatsky's guide, Master Moria, gave the info. Yes, um, there's a lot of info given uh, purely to Madame Blavatsky. I think she's got some amazing information. It's just that sometimes when I read her books, it's so intense and her sentences can be as long as one full page. So by the time I read like 10 lines, I'm like, okay, let me first, <laughs> in my little mind, understand what she's written just in one page. Very good for insomnia sometimes because <laughs> you can sleep so fast with it. Uh, but amazing knowledge, I, I must say. The kind of knowledge, uh, even if you read 10 pages, is a lot more than you can get in New Age books. Does this mean we are moving from ascending Kali Yuga towards uh, ascending? Yes, it would mean because we have just taken, but we're still in that Kali Yuga section. We haven't really come out of it fully, but we are definitely moving upwards. Yeah, so that's a plus point for all of us. So, um, did he see through the entire solar system? Uh, maybe Master Moria, Master Joaquil, and the other great, te um, other great masters who've been helping, uh, Master Kutumbi and others who've been helping them are the ones who gave them a lot of, these, a lot of the information that we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, how many years is one run? <laughs> we can't count it in our, uh, in us, in our measurement of time, because the rounds are really, really uh, quite large. Uh, if you want to call, even with reference to the moon chain and us, um, it's, it's several, several, several thousands years ago. Yeah, it, it didn't happen very recently. So time for them with reference to rounds and us is, is completely different. We are in uh, Dwarpa Yuga. Yes, we're moving towards that. We, we're coming out of Kali Yuga. That's why you'll notice there are still a so, lot of things happening and uh, the things that, have, that hopefully are going to stop happening and man is going to become more um, evolved as a race and try to do things that are in line with uh, his fellow brothers and sisters and also with Mother Earth, not killing his brother and sisters, which even animals do not do and destroying Mother Earth, which also animals do not do, yeah? That's a kingdom below us. So we, we are supposed to be more intelligent and we should be using our will, our uh, energies, our purposes for higher ones. And that's what, that's going to happen. And so one of the transition is supposed to be, uh, which was written in the books, uh, even in these books, that at the end of, you know, um, the last 25 years, if you look at it, at the end, like around the late 80s and 90s, they said there would be, a lot more of what is called energy sciences that are going to come and it has started to come and one of them is pranic healing yes and so with these energy sciences um, many more other things will come with it and once it gets uh, automatically intertwined with medicine uh, with uh, all aspects of, of life right uh, whether it's uh, um, psychology or whether it's medicine or engineering or physics or whatever it is when you start using it in that manner, uh, it will help man reach a completely different level. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> we, we should get uh, to a point where we are all evolved. Otherwise, we're going to be left behind again. So tomorrow is going to be interesting. We're going to be talking about the moon chain where we all came from and where we are right now and try and see what actually happened there. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. And there's also the intervention of what you call 
uh, from Venus. Yes, uh, these great beings of flame or the fire mist. And so we're going to talk about them and what they did to help our evolution as well. So there's a lot for tomorrow. Uh, keep yourself uh, interested in that and come back. So we should have a lot more there. Is there any correlation between ripples of evolution we studied in earlier class and the seven cycles mentioned now? The ripples. The ripples of evolution is with reference to coming down, correct? Yeah. So while we're coming down, it, it is going to be that ripple effect that continues to manifest all the way here. And that's why we said uh, when it comes to the animal kingdom, it's not just the first wave that has come. There are many waves that are coming. Right. And those waves are going to stop on all those uh, various globes as well and different rounds. So there's a lot of things happening at this point. All right. Uh, Mina, what's your question? No. OK. Nisha, do you have a question or just raised hands? It was for the you know. earlier. All right. Now I can't make out uh, who. OK. Lakshmi, do you have a question? Uh, yes, Sumi. Lakshmi, is that a question? Yes, Kusumi. Uh, yes. Like, just want to know, like, uh, we seem to have finished earlier and I thought there'll be more questions. I think you're just digesting the, the information. All right. Uh, let's just go down. Uh, what were our first and second incarnations? We'll come to that. If, if it's mentioned in this book, I will get to that. Otherwise, you can read the book called The Solar System. Um, it took me many months to read that book. Um, not because I didn't want to read it, but Master Cho was writing books at that point. So every time Master Cho's new book would come, this book would go onto the shelf and I would continue to read that. So yeah, it, it's quite interesting. All right. Uh, actually, Earth is the third uh, global chain. Um, Shijit, I will just look in the book uh, right here. Uh, it's mentioned here as the fourth uh, chain, though I did notice in, in the diagram it was the third. I'm going to cross verify that a little later. Are all the uh, initial sessions uploaded? Okay. Um, this is 732. Um, this Aditya can give you details about the earlier sessions which are recorded, which, which will remain for a while. Okay. Thank you, Ani. All right. Why are we discussing only three planets? What about the rest? <laughs> because they're in the astral level and they do not have names. The only planets we know are the three, which are physical, and that is the Mars, Mercury, and Earth. The others don't have a physical body. And so even though the astral uh, planets are there, we can't connect or see or understand them at this point. Yeah? Okay. Um, the author of this book is called C.W. Leadbeater. The book is called A Textbook of Theosophy. We are in chapter number nine. Yeah, so uh, Mohit, he's given you where you can find these sessions. That is at 7.33. Thank you, Mohit. All right, Aditya has also given it to you. I have a question. May I? Please, Rakesh, go ahead. Um, I will unmute you. Yes, go ahead. Uh, hi, Sumi. Hi, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Rakesh, are you asking me something? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. one sec. My bad, my bad. <laughs> I think you've been talking to me, all of you. I'm so sorry. I took this off. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Yes, Rakesh. Uh, yeah, you said no. Uh, the, the wave or the energy moves from A to B, B to C, C to D, E, Correct. F, G. Yeah, uh, in, when it moves like... Uh, that is one round, you said A, B, C, D, E, F, G, then again A, B, C, D, F, G. Correct. So in such a moment, the, uh, the, is, the humans are still there in all the seven rounds or like? There are no humans. Uh, humans, I presume, when we have physical bodies. So there are beings, for example, in Mars and Mercury and in Venus. Yes, but they do not have physical bodies. So when you watch all these interesting movies, especially from the West, where they're trying to go to Mars and, you know, meet their, uh, meet some beings there. They cannot, even though they are there because they are in a completely different vibration. Remember the, the body is made of a completely different uh, oscillation and uh, the physical body, as long as you're sleeping, cannot connect. Maybe if they yeah. sleep there, uh, maybe they might be able to connect to someone. I'm not sure. 
no uh, yeah. now one more question is so for example we you said you are we are in the fourth round so for example in the first round yes uh, when it came a b c d in that time uh, where their physical say not even uh, humans as such might be animals plants or whatever it is as what is a denser matter a b c d we are in the first round it passed through the earth and second round it passed through the earth third Correct. round it passed through the earth and Correct. this is the fourth so uh, all right so that will come tomorrow so basically so you you're right in asking me that question so the fourth if you remember first elemental second elemental third elemental then mineral right yeah yeah something so like so we that. are right now here mineral kingdom we are still in the mineral kingdom here yes though we are humans yes we have evolved from the mineral kingdom okay 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 so uh, just anticipating in in the seventh round will there be still minerals and will there be still humans Or yeah. like uh, because you see we're still only in the fourth round. Uh, the life force will have to come back again onto this planet. So in the fifth round, again it will touch upon the Earth. It's not that that uh, nothing will happen here. The wave of life will continue, and there will be uh, another process, but it'll be much faster because uh, lots of things have already been created on this Earth. Okay, the, when the life force moves from uh, D to E, yes, D to E and E to F. During that time, when the life force is in E or F, will there be human? Or there won't be physical a... humans, no. Ah, uh, okay. Then again, in the sixth round, when the life force come to uh, D. Okay, uh, let me put it this way: It's not going to be physical humans like us. There might be a, a completely different because when uh, the life force that is uh, descends in the next round, which is the fifth round, and then comes to the Earth. right okay. at the fifth round the world period will stay there because there has to be new human race oh. but it won't be like us okay 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 got we it. as this human race we will have already gone okay this whole race of us we will all go there will be something completely new that will come yes whether you'll call them human beings uh, in a in a way you could because uh, if i call myself human being because i have a physical body then yes there is going to be a human race but it's not going to be us a different uh, different kind of human being a different wave <laughs> and okay. whatever oh, wow. comes with that wave and goes with that wave yeah okay so in the fifth sixth and seventh there will be different kind of human beings yes that For is example. when only when the life wave stops at the earth when it moves out of the earth then there's going to be no life it's just going to be dead there for a while till the next wave comes okay miles to go before we sleep <laughs> yes 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 it's a lot yeah so with that uh, we're going to Thanks try and end this You're Thank most you. welcome. Thank you. All right. So, does uh, pralaya take place after seven? Now, that one I'm not too sure about pralaya, Doctor Sagar. I'll have to look at that. Uh, that in relation to theosophy, I haven't really put my mind to it. But that's a good question for me to ponder on. Uh, takes place after seven rounds. Is Mars the next planet of life after Earth goes into the next chain? um is that going to be how it is that we'll have to find out with the with the books that we have to read yeah it's coming it is coming yesterday's session is not available in recordings okay um bagya if you could kindly contact aditya i'll ask him to help you out with that if you could give your number or your email so aditya can contact you yeah author of solar system is uh arthur powell yeah also from theosophy yes oh thank you someone's written there a e powell arthur powell yeah all right that's it if we don't develop as humans then we have to wait for the next uh, i don't know if we have to wait for the next uh, uh, chain it's actually the next incarnation yeah so remember we spoke about the moon we're going to talk about that tomorrow so then it'll answer part of this yeah so you don't have to wait for the next chain just the next incarnation we have seven so you have chances <laughs> we all have chances the book written by uh, madam blavatsky there are lots of books uh, the one i just happened to refer to was occult chemistry yeah there are a lot of books by her and she's got some amazing valuable precious uh, knowledge and wisdom in them okay i think that's it people
uh, more or less, I think we are done. Thank you so much. Let's close the session. Cl close your eyes, connect down to your palate. Inhale and exhale. Feel gratitude, respect, and love to God, to our beloved teacher, Master Cholat, Mahagaraji Nailing, and all the great teachers and masters, to all the beings who've been present to help us keep this whole thing going, to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Cho, Koksvi Lord, Mahagaraji Nailing, to all the great ones, to the great white brotherhood, to all the great teachers and masters of theosophy, to Gautama Buddha, to the Lord Christ, to Yehoshua Pamiriam, to Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha, to our soul and divine self, we thank you all for your great, great blessings, for your light, for your knowledge, for your understanding, for your wisdom, for greater clarity and greater understanding of these priceless teachings. Help us to absorb and assimilate it clearly, properly, so we would have a greater understanding of who we are, where we came from, and where we will go. In the process, help us to become the best divine instruments we can. Thank you, and in full faith, gratitude, respect, and love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Inhale and exhale, relax the body. You may slowly open your eyes with a smile. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Atma Namaste, and good night. I'm going to end the session for all of you. Yes, much love. Bye-bye. Atma Namaste.